So in this first tutorial video, I'm going to talk about installing Audio Guide on your computer. I'm going to give you an overview of how Audio Guide works. And I'm going to then dive into the first kind of proper topic of the tutorial, which is sound file segmentation. So to download Audio Guide, simply go to the Audio Guide homepage. In the download tab, the first link you find will uh, point you to the compressed uh, source code. You've got the compressed source code now on my desktop. I'm gonna open uh, the compressed file and we'll get the directory. The directory is essentially where all of Audio Guide's code lives, which you don't really have to worry about. And more, much more importantly, where a series of scripts are that you will use to interact with the program. So Audio Guide is written in Python, which is a programming language that um, comes as part of the OSX distribution. And the way you interact with Audio Guide, the way you use the program, is by uh, issuing commands to the terminal. The terminal is, like Python, um, an application that comes standard with OSX. I think it's in applications slash utilities. And so to run an Audio Guide script to interact with the program, you simply type Python, the name of the script you want to use, and then some arguments afterwards that tell Audio Guide what you want it to do. Uh, that might be an options file that parameterizes a concatenation. It might be the name of a sound file that you want to segment. I'll talk a little bit more about those commands in a second. They're not super tricky uh, to get the hang of. But before I do, I want to talk a little bit about some uh, aspects of installation uh, that, uh, with regard to dependencies. So Audio Guide um, is pretty self-contained, but it does depend on two uh, important things that you have to make sure you have on your computer in order for Audio Guide to work properly. The first is probably the most complicated, and that's that um, within the Python, Python programming language, like I said, it comes standard as part of OS X, but there are a bunch of additional extra libraries you can download and add on. And Python, uh, Audio Guide does depend on Python's library called NumPy. NumPy is a really standard Python library that is used in lots of programs. You may or actually already have it on your machine. If you want to test if you have it, simply type Python into a terminal, hit return, and then write import space N-U-M-P-Y and hit return again. If Python doesn't complain, if no error message pops up, then you've got NumPy and you're sorted. However, if uh, Python gives you an error message and says it can't find NumPy, for instance, I'll just write some nonsense, um, you'll get a message like this saying it can't find the module you're asking for. In that case, you do have to install NumPy on your machine. Um, a quick Google search for install NumPy OS X will give you a bunch of different options as to how to do this. You could download Anaconda. You could download some other sort of prepackaged Python distribution that has NumPy as part of it. Homebrew is another option some people use. The thing that I think is easiest and what I use for all of my Python libraries is something called pip. And to install pip on a machine, simply type sudo, sudo, easy underscore install pip. Uh, when I hit return, it will ask me for my password. And once I give it my password, it's going to download pip, which is the Python package installer, and uh, expand it, uh, compile it, and put it in all the right places on your machine. Once you have pip installed through the sudo easy install pip command, you can go ahead and install any Python package you want. In this case, we want to install the module numpy. So we're going to write python minus m pip install numpy. In fact, you can install almost any sort of popular Python package this way with this command. In this case, we're going to ask for it to install NumPy. Um, so if you don't have NumPy in your machine, Python will download NumPy, expand it, pip will install all the things in the right places. And at the end of it, you should hopefully have a working version of Python with NumPy ready to be used. You can see, um, in, I ran this on my machine, and I got um, output saying that NumPy is already installed, that the arguments, the requirements already been satisfied. So I'm all set to go. So that's one thing, the first important thing you need to have working on your machine, Python with NumPy. And again, uh, if you run into trouble with the easy install pip routine, you can look uh, online to find other ways to install NumPy on your machine. So the second thing you want to make sure you have on your machine is CSound. CSound technically isn't required to use Audio Guide, but the way Audio Guide works is that it will do concatenative sound synthesis, it'll crunch all the numbers. And then at the end of that process, it will automatically render a sound file with all the selected concatenated, concatenated sounds 
uh, and play it back for you at, at the command line, it does that using CSUN. And so if you want that part of audio get to function, you have to make sure CSUN's on your machine. Um, so uh, again, a quick Google search for installing CSUN in OS X um, will yield, I think maybe this uh, first link here is the good one to go to. You'll be able to download a um, DMG installer to just do it all automatically for you. And what you're looking for is um, after you run the installation, you wanna make sure that you can type CSound and hit return into the terminal. It should print out a message like this, which is essentially CSound's sort of help message. Um, and you wanna make sure you know, the CSound command is found and you wanna make sure you have a version of CSound that is 6.0 or greater, um, which is probably about 2015 that 6.0 came out. So um, most recent installations of CSound will satisfy that version requirement. Okay, so we've got Python on our machine because it's OS X and Python is standard. And we've also got a NumPy installed. Um, we verified that CSound is working at least according to the terminal. And now we can get started to uh, use Audio Guide. Now, one final troubleshooting thing I wanna say about installation is that if you are unfortunately fortunate enough to have a new uh, OS X laptop, you will likely have um, a Catalina installed. And as many audiophiles know, Catalina has a whole host of new security measures it's implemented to keep you safe. Um, it also uh, breaks a lot of the audio plugins and lots of sort of third-party binary downloads that you may have used in the past. And so the first time we run Audio Guide, and again, this only applies to Catalina, earlier versions of OS X will not have this problem. But the very first time we try to run Audio Guide, we're gonna get some errors on Catalina because we've never, um, uh, run this particular package before. So I'm just gonna run a command. It doesn't, uh, it's not super important what I'm typing right now. I'm just running a command to show you what I mean. So I'm gonna segment the sound file. So you'll see that um, OS X will pop up a dialogue saying that um, the developer cannot be verified. All you have to do is hit cancel. The program will fail. Go into your system preferences. Go into security and privacy. And you'll see this this little tab here wasn't full of information before, but now it is saying allow apps downloaded from, and you can see this a binary just tried to run us here. Click allow anyway, run the command again. You'll get OSX asking you one last time if you're really sure if you want to use this binary. If you are sure that you want to use the binary, click open. Now, unfortunately, we have a second binary that's part of the audio guide package that you'll have to do this process over again one more time. So cancel. Go back to uh, security and privacy, say allow anyway, run it one last time, say open, and now we're done. So we had to kind of sidestep that, um, the normal security procedure for Catalina to get those binaries to be accepted by the system. But once you've done this, Audio Guide now works, it's fully functional, and you don't have to worry about this binary stuff again um, with the distribution that you just downloaded. So now I wanna give you a quick overview of the workflow of audio guide give you a sense of how you actually run the program like i said it works on the terminal and we're going to start by just running the first example um, the audio guide distribution comes with a folder called examples here you'll find a bunch of different sort of snippets of code that you can use and modify and repurpose that have show you different approaches to how to do concatenative synthesis and audio guide we're just going to run this first one uh, as a concatenation now. For a target sound file, this one uses an 11 second recording of uh, John Cage telling a story from the piece, uh, the book Indeterminacy, but also the piece that was recorded in Determinacy. The lecture is so soon that I don't think I'll be able to get all 90 stories written. For the corpus of sounds that we're gonna use in this example, this audio also comes in the distribution, and this is, I believe, a, about a minute long uh, snippet from a orchestral piece by Helmut Lockermann. So what this first example is gonna do is it's going to try to rearrange pieces from the Lockermann recording to follow the time varying changes and features of John Cage's voice. The first thing we have to do to make this work is we actually have to take this long recording and break it up into smaller pieces. We're gonna do that by running 
the AG segment SF script that comes with audio guide. Uh, the way I do this is I type in Python. I actually use Python 3 on my machine, which is why you'll see me you'll see me typing Python 3 pretty much for this entire tutorial series. Uh, audio guide works in either Python or Python 3. Um, I just happen to use Python 3 at the moment. Um, so we're going to run this segment SF script to break the Lakamon sound file up into small pieces. I, the easiest way to do this if you're starting with the terminal is just drag the file into the terminal and you'll get its full path printed there. Um, the AG segment SF script, we'll talk about this in detail uh, in the second part of this video, but for now I'll just say that it takes a sound file as its first argument and what it's going to do is it's going to analyze this sound file and try to break it up into small pieces. It creates an output text file, which is the same name as the sound file plus the extension .txt. And in the output text file are all the start and stop times of all the sound segments it found in this minute and a half long recording. Again, I know I'm going through this quickly, but I will talk about this in a lot more detail in the segmentation part of this video, the second half of this first tutorial. So that's the first thing we do is segment our um, long corpus files so that audio guide knows how to break them up into pieces. The second thing we do is run the concatenation script, agconcatenate.py. It takes one argument, which is a path to an options file. You can see I just dragged that in the terminal as well. This is the options file we're working with. And in this options file is specified everything that the concatenative synthesis program audio guide needs to know. The target sound file, how it's broken into pieces, the corpus sound resources, which we just uh, broke into pieces already with the ag segment sf script, some information about searching, some information about superimposition and layering. And that's it, a pretty straightforward example. If we're gonna run audio guide now. You'll see sort of the progress of the concatenation as well as at the end, you'll hear the output sound file that it creates. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this options file and I'm gonna add a parameter to it that essentially will affect the rendering at the very end. I'm gonna change the value of this parameter called CSound channel render method to target output mix. Um, I'll be using this a lot over the course of the tutorial. Essentially when you write this into any of your concatenation options files, it will put the target sound file on the left speaker and the corpus uh, sounds that are picked as part of the output in the right speaker. This is just for you to hear the similarity between sort of John Cage's voice and the sounds from the Lockamon database that Audio Guide just picked. So I'm going to save this and now run this uh, identical command again. The lecture is so soon that I don't think. I'll be able to get all 90 stories written. So by setting C sound channel render method to target output mix, it's sort of a didactic thing to do, but essentially it lets you hear the target sound file and the selected sounds from the corpus side by side and makes the, the parity, the similarity between those the, the corpus selections and the target a bit more evident. Now I want to make a couple of comments about sort of output files and data with audio guide because a couple of things happened under the hood while I ran this first concatenation. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete a couple of folders so I can show you uh, what I mean. So when we first uh, get audio guide and download it, um, there's a couple of directories that are gonna be created automatically the first time you use it that don't exist as part of the distribution. The first one is that within the audio guide folder, a directory called data is gonna be made. That's where all of the analyses are put of sound files. The second thing is that the first time you run audio guide, a folder in the audio guide directory called output is created. And that's where audio guide is gonna by default put all of its output resources, sound files, the log file, things about segmentation and selection. So I've deleted those now just so that I can run audio guide again and show you what I mean. Um, so again, you'll see that a folder is gonna be created here called data. A uh, second folder in the main audio guide directory is going to be created called output. Here's the data. And here's output. The lecture is so soon. So I'll take them in turn. Essentially, the way audio guide works is that to evaluate similarity between 
segments of John Cage's voice and pieces of the Lockamon recording. It does this through a musical information retrieval uh, and through an analysis that generates audio descriptors. Uh, those analysis files are not small. Uh, general rule of thumb is that for, um, for a stereo audio file, uh, the analysis file is going to be about one tenth the size. So obviously, as you use Audio Guide more and more, this data folder is going to get larger and larger. I think by default in the program, there is a two gigabyte limit. Um, and once data gets over two gigabytes, Audio Guide will start automatically deleting analyses of sound files that you haven't used for a while. So it'll take the last accessed analysis file and remove it until it gets below that two gigabyte limit. But you should just know that this is where Audio Guide is going to place all of its analyses. You can delete this at any time and it will just you'll just have to run those analyses again. The program will take a little bit longer uh, if an analysis hasn't yet been created. So that's where sound analysis goes in Audio Guide by default. The second thing is this output folder. Um, like I said, there's a log.html file that's created that gives you information about the concatenative process. There's um, a couple other output uh, files that give you some information about how the target was broken up into pieces and what pieces of the corpus were matched to the target. I'll talk about those in the second half of this video. And then there are output resources as well, uh, meaning a, a output JSON file that can be used in Max MSP to play back this concatenation in Max using this Max MSP Java player. Um, the output CSD file that CSound uses and indeed the output sound file that CSound uh, rendered and we just heard. The lecture is so soon. So by default, all of that stuff is put in this output folder. And every time you run Audio Guide, it's going to delete all these files and essentially write them again. You'll lose any previous concatenations when you run um, a subsequent concatenation. And if you go to the documentation for Audio Guide, you'll find that there's a whole section on output files. You can, of course, instead of having the output files go into this output folder, you can give Audio Guide a path to anywhere you want. So I'm just gonna do that quickly right now. I'm gonna change the CSound render file path. This is the sound file that CSound makes. I'm gonna change it to be right on my desktop. Let's call it my sound. Let's call it cage. So you can change these paths to be whatever you want. If I now run this same options file again, you'll see that it writes the sound file. Uh, the lecture is so soon that I, asked for. that I don't think I'll be able to get all 90 stories written. So as you can see from what I just did here, the way Audio Guide works basically is that there are a bunch of variables that have default values and you can overwrite those default values by including the variable in your Audio Guide concatenation options file and specifying a new value. A full list of all those variables is available in the documentation. Most variables in Audio Guide are simple. They're a string like this, you use the equal sign, and then they get set to some value, a string or a number, a list of things. There are also some special parameters in Audio Guide, like target, like corpus, like search, like superimpose, that are a little bit more complicated, that have a syntax that's a bit more a, a bit less straightforward. I will cover each one of these throughout this five part tutorial. And in the next, sort of the second half of this video, I'm gonna be talking about segmentation. I'm gonna talk about the target sound file and its object, TSF. I'm also gonna talk about how to break apart a long corpus sound file like the one we've been using in this example, this excerpt of uh, Mouvement by Lacamon. I'm gonna talk about how to break that up with AG segment SF so that it can be used in a concatenation like the one you just heard. I'll do my best to make these videos as brief and succinct as I can, but I think in the interest of making this tutorial easy to navigate, I'm gonna go ahead and take a break here and start a second video to finish this first part of the tutorial on sound file segmentation.